Hi guys! So I recently made this dress, which was inspired by this DBF dress. So today I'm going to show you how I took a basic pattern to create the print or color blocking that you see. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to be modifying Simplicity Pattern 8415, and we're going to just be using the basic front and back um, to modify for the color blocking or the print blocking, whichever you choose to do. The sleeve and the facing stay intact and there is no modification. So make sure and cut out pattern piece number one and two. That's the back and the front for views A, B, and C. You're going to need a ruler and something to write with. So if you're going to be drawing with a pencil, that's fine. I'm going to be using a Sharpie so that you guys can see me on camera. And then you're going to need, of course, a rotary cutter or a pair of scissors for your fabric. And you're going to need a roll of paper, so either anything that you might have at home um, from the craft store or even old wrapping paper will work if you can write on it. Okay, so normally you would be cutting this piece, this pattern piece on the fold of your fabric so that when you opened it after you cut it, it would be one whole piece. Unfortunately, if we want to make the lines to color block, we need to be working with one entire piece. So instead what you're going to do is you're going to set this aside. You're going to take your piece of paper, you're going to fold it in half. Now this in essence is the um, fold where we would have folded our fabric. And we're just going to trace around this. So I'm going to place my pattern piece so that the front edge where it says center fold is on the fold of my pattern, of my paper I should say. And then I'm going to use my pattern weights to hold it in place and then we're going to trace around this. Now you can just cut around with your rotary cutter or your pair of scissors or you can trace it. And now you want to make sure that you transfer your dart. So I'm going to mark where my dart leg is going to be. And I'm going to pierce my paper at my size. I'm cutting a size 10 just so I can transfer that dot. And then of course I want to make sure I transfer my notches. So I'm going to put a little notch there. Transfer any dots that you see. I'm going to trace this in my Sharpie so that you guys can see. And now I'm going to make my dart so I can see where my dot was. I'm just going to match my dart legs to my dot. And now you can go ahead and cut this out. Now when you open it up, you have one full pattern piece. The only thing that you need to do now is transfer your other dart to the other side. Make your dot and mark your dart legs. Transfer any other notches. Now we can start deciding where we're going to make our color blocking lines. Now you could decide to make your lines wherever you want them. Honestly, if you wanted to do them straight down in three different places, you could do that. I'm working based on the inspiration dress that I had by DBF. So I'm going to start somewhere on my neckline here and I'm going to make sure that I stop before I get to my dart. So that's going to be my first line. And then I think I'm going to start halfway on the other shoulder and use a pencil first just in case you don't like the shape that you're creating. And again, this is sort of just whatever you want to do. I'm just sort of following, like I said, the inspiration picture that I had. Now I'm going to go back through with my Sharpie. And so now we have three separate pieces. We have this piece, we have 
this piece and we have this piece. Okay, so we're gonna pay a little closer attention to the back because one, we are adding a zipper, which means we do need a center back uh, seam, but we need to do it a little differently so that when we uh, combine those color block pieces, our colors match up and aren't like this in the back. So we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to place it on the fold just like we did the front, even though the pattern piece does not call for a fold. And you can either trace or cut around your pattern piece. I don't have any darts, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut. And now you're gonna transfer your notches Open this up first. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to cut down the center. So, following your fold line. And now you're going to turn it over and you're going to fold in your seam allowance. So you know we have 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you can take your ruler if you want to be exactly precise. And you're going to fold. If this were fabric, this would be the wrong side of your fabric. over and you're going to do the same thing to the other side okay now turn it back over and now we want to draw the lines while they while our backs are pushed up against each other as if our zipper were already in place right so get a little bit of, of tape so get a little bit of tape and we're just going to tape together just so that they stay in place. And now we can go ahead and draw our lines using our front piece as our guide. Okay, so I have my front piece with what essentially would be the right side of the fabric facing up. It's where all of my markings are. And the right side of my paper, or if it was fabric, it would be fabric, is facing down, so right sides are facing you're looking at the wrong side of your paper, the one that has the folded seam allowance. And we're gonna bring them up so that our underarms are at the same point, okay? So you wanna bring up so that both your underarms are matching. That way we know when we take up our dart that this will all be matching. Right now, obviously the front is longer because we haven't taken up this dart, okay? So just make sure that you align there. And then use some weights just to keep things together so it doesn't shift on you. And the line that we're gonna draw in the back is gonna be slightly different at the neckline because we want it to match here, okay? We want it to match at the side seam. So we're gonna go from the notch that you have on your neck, on your back neck, to where our line meets here, okay? So we're not exactly following that exact line from the front. Now you can go ahead and follow the other one exactly as you see it. So you should be able to see your line through the paper. And I'll explain why we have this folded out the way we do. Okay, so you're going to turn your back to the right side. And through your Sharpie, you should be able to see your lines. So we're just going to go over them one more time. And you're going to go across your folded seam. Now we're going to go ahead and remove our tape. And I want you to open your seam. 
And now you want to take this line that we've created and you're going to extend it into your seam allowance. So now we have one line that goes all the way. And now you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. This line here that you see that you've marked, you're not gonna need that, okay? So that goes away. This goes away. Now extend your line. Now this is why we've done that. So if we have this up against each other without folding in our seam allowances, you'll see that our lines are off. But when you fold and sew your seam allowance to allow for your zipper, your lines will connect. And that's what you want because you don't want to do this without having that fold and without accounting for the seam and then start sewing your zipper and end up with seams like this, right? Where one color ends here and one color ends up here. So that's why we transfer those lines into our seam allowance after we've designed where our line is gonna be cut. So now that we have this, we're going to go ahead and number each piece so we don't get confused. And then we're going to cut out our pattern pieces. Okay, so we're going to label these pattern pieces 1B, 2B for back, 3B, 4B, and 5B. For the front, we're going to label 1F, 2F, and 3F. So now we're going to cut these pattern pieces. And now you need to keep in mind that each pattern piece now that we cut, wherever they're going to rejoin, you need to add seam allowance. You could redraft each pattern piece after it's cut out to add the half inch seam allowance. Or you can do what I'm going to show you and just add the seam allowance directly onto your fabric as you're cutting. So go ahead and cut out these pattern pieces. And you can set your front pieces aside. Now that we have all of our pattern pieces cut, we can start laying them down on our fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna show you really quickly how to remind yourself to add seam allowance if you're not gonna retrace all of these pattern pieces with seam allowance. What I like to do is everywhere that I need to add seam allowance, I just write a half inch, just to remind myself that at this cut line, I need to add a half inch seam allowance. And then here, I need to add a half inch seam allowance because these are going to join, right? Here I need to add a half inch seam allowance. And I need to add one here because these are going to join. For one and two, I need to do the same thing. Because they're going to join here. Now we don't need to add it to the center back because we've already done that when we cut on the fold. Now for your front pieces, you have to do the same thing. So we're going to add half inch there and a half inch here, but then we also need to add a half inch here because it's going to join here. And once you have all your pattern pieces labeled and you have reminded yourself to add a half inch to your fabric as you're cutting, then the next thing that you want to do is figure out what color is going to be what, right? So if you're using three colors or three prints, you're going to decide that this is going to be uh, you know, red, black, and yellow. So you need to keep that same format for your back pieces so that the red match, the black match, and the red match, so when you turn around, you don't have a mixed match of colors, right? You want it to follow you from front to back. So go ahead and decide what colors are going to be what. Now because each pattern piece here is a different color or print, you're not gonna be cutting 
on the fold of your fabric, which is, which is usually how you would do it, right? You lay a pattern piece on the fold of your fabric, you cut, you end up with two. But all of these pieces are cut in a single layer. So you're going to lay your pattern piece face up with the right side of your fabric also facing up and you're going to cut. Okay, so I have decided that I'm going to use this ivory color, this sort of taupey color, and then a purple color. So you really want to think about this. You want to decide what is going to be your sleeve and your small cut piece, because this piece and your sleeve are the same color on one side, and this side and this sleeve are the same color on this side. So you want to keep all of those things in mind, and you want to see what colors work better with each other. So for me, I want the, tan the light ivory color to be the smaller cut piece with my sleeve, and then I'm going to graduate over to the taupey color, and then I think I want the purple color. So I want sort of a gradient look, and so that's what I'm going to label and cut my pieces. I'm not going to cut all of the pieces on camera for you, but I am going to show you how I cut one. Okay, so I'm going to cut out my purple color first. Okay, so that's my 3F, my front third piece. And so my fabric, the right side of my fabric is facing up because we're cutting a single layer. And the right side of my pattern piece is also facing up. You don't want to cut like this where the writing on your pattern piece is facing your fabric because you're going to end up with pieces that don't match. So make sure that both your pattern piece and your fabric are right sides up. So here are your two options. Now I will tell you that I cheat every time and I will eyeball this half inch seam allowance that I'm adding and cut. And you can absolutely do that if you're good at eyeballing. I can pretty much eyeball anything. But if you're not sure and you wanna make sure, you can go ahead and measure out the half inch from your cut piece and make a mark. And then you would do that all the way up your piece. And then you would literally cut on the line that you just marked because you've just added that half inch seam allowance. But again, if you're like me, you're probably just gonna eyeball it. So I'm gonna cut around my other pieces first. So I'm gonna cut around my armhole. And now I'm going to cut, making sure that I've added that half inch, although you did just see me mark it. <laughs> And now you can see that half inch is extending past my paper. Now I'm gonna go ahead and transfer my dart and my markings like you normally would. And you're going to follow that same method for all of your pattern pieces. Okay, so I have all of my pieces cut out of fabric and I left them pinned to my paper to make it easy for me as I'm trying to piece everything together. Um, it can be a little confusing if you unpin your pattern pieces and your fabric and then you don't know what goes where, so. Um, we know that 1B gets attached to 2B, 2B gets attached to 3B, 3 to 4, and 5 and 4, of course. So you just want to make sure that you have everything pinned together. I'm going to show you how to sew together all of the back pieces because it's a little more complicated. And then um, you should be fine for your front pieces. I want you to also make sure that you cut out your sleeves. So you're going to need two different color sleeves, right, because one side is going to be one color and the other is going to be corresponding to whatever color you're using on this side. So you want to make sure that you have both your sleeves cut out. And then we're also going to need a facing so you have those pattern pieces in your pattern. So make sure to cut your front facing on the fold and then your two back facings and then also interface them. Okay, so first we're going to start by pinning 2B and 1B together. Okay, so now when you turn it over, you'll see that I've pressed my seams nice and flat and open. And now you can go ahead and trim this little tail off, just like that. Okay, now go ahead and grab the next piece. So we did one back, two back, and now we're gonna start working on putting together the rest of our pieces. I'm gonna set this aside for just a sec. Okay, so we're gonna work on 3B, 4B, and 5B now. Okay, so put 3B aside for just a second. I want you to grab 4B and 5B. And 
and we're gonna build this side of the shoulder. So it's the same thing you just did, right? These go here. So with right sides facing each other, go ahead and pin. And again, using half inch seam allowance, go ahead and make one straight stitch, then press your seams open. Okay, so I went ahead and pressed my seams open. And again, you can cut this little tail off. And now I want you to grab 3B. And with right sides facing, you're gonna go ahead and pin. I'm gonna start by pinning at the bottom. Now I'm going to take you to the sewing machine. We're going to sew from the bottom, work our way up slightly around this curve, and then we're going to also end up with another little tail which we'll cut off after we're done. Okay, you're going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. And remember you're using a half inch seam allowance. Go ahead and press your seams open. Okay, now go ahead and cut off your little tail. And you can cut off the tail over at the top near your neckline. And now we have one straight line for our center back. So if you align both your backs you'll see that you'll get exactly what I talked about, how one is up here and one is down here. But when we fold in our seam allowance, which is 5 eighths of an inch, you'll notice that they'll match up exactly where they need to be. So now that you have both of your backs, go ahead and put together your front and then we will go ahead and attach our, our two back pieces to our front. Let me show you what the front will look like. Okay, so this is what your front will look like. It's much easier because you just have the three pieces that you put together in the same way. And now we're gonna take our backs and lay them over our fronts with right sides facing. So right side facing and right side facing. And you're first going to pin at the shoulder because you want those seams to match. Now go ahead and grab your other back piece and we're going to also pin at the shoulder. Now go ahead to the sewing machine and stitch across using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on both shoulders. Okay, so both of the shoulders are now sewn and as you can see it creates a really beautiful line on your um, fabric. So we're going to go ahead and attach our sleeves using the flat method. So we'll start with one side. This is the front, this is the back. This is my shoulder line. And we're using the same color, so whatever your shoulder color is here, that's what your, the color sleeve you're using. So I'm going to pin at my shoulder notch first. And I'm going to make sure that it's right at my shoulder seam. I'm going to pin at my single notch and then you should have had like a little dot that you transferred so I'm going to pin there and I'm going to move over to the other side. I'm going to pin at my double notch Okay, and now you're going to go ahead and sew using again 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm going to start at one end. I'm going to double or back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Now you might need to stretch and pull. Now go ahead and attach your other sleeve using the same method. Okay, once your sleeve is attached, go ahead and fold the sleeve onto itself. 
You're going to pin matching your underarm seams. Make sure to match your side seams. Continue pinning your side, and then we're going to pin our underarm seam. You're going to start sewing at your sleeve hem. You're going to work your way all the way up your sleeve until you reach your underarm seams. You're going to pivot and we're going to continue sewing all the way down our side seam. Okay, you're going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end and we're using again 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. You're going to pin and sew your other sleeve and side seam the same way. Okay, so now you can see the dress forming. All we need to do now is insert our zipper and add our facing. We're almost done. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this wrong side out and so that right sides are facing and we're going to pin our center backs together. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to stitch using a normal length stitch all the way up until we get to our notch. You should have had three little notches where your zipper is going to end. Then you're going to back stitch and we're going to change our length, our stitch length from a 2.5 to a 5 or whatever basting stitch length you have on your sewing machine and then we're going to baste the remaining part of the back. Okay, we're going to back stitch at the beginning. And we're using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now I'm going to back stitch. I'm going to cut my thread. And now I'm going to go to a 5.0. And I'm going to baste the remaining part of my center back. I want you to go ahead and press your seam open before we attach our zipper. Okay, so I'm going to place my zipper face down. I always use extra long zippers so that I can have my zipper pull completely out of the way. And working only on our seam allowance, the rest of the dress is to the left of me. I'm going to place the middle of my zipper, the invisible side down, along the center of the seam where the seam is. And I'm just going to baste this. And I'm using my regular presser foot for now, and then I'll switch over. Now turn this over, and you're going to work in the other direction. Again, all of the dresses to the left of me, I'm only working on seam allowance. Now using your seam ripper, you're only going to remove your basting stitches. Turn your dress right side out. Go ahead and open your zipper. And you want your zipper pull to be completely out of the way. Now go ahead and switch your regular foot into your zipper foot. Okay, now using a normal length stitch, back stitch at the beginning and you're going to just pull your coils open as you're sewing. You're going to do the same thing in the other direction. Once you're done stitching up the other way, you can go ahead and close your zipper and turn your dress right side out. So once your zipper's done, you can see that the line goes from one side to the other seamlessly. And so 
that's that's sort of what you want to see when you have your zipper all done up. Now all we uh, need to do now is add our facing and then do our hem. So, okay, go ahead and sew your facings. Um, you're going to attach your backs to your front and stitch across at the shoulder using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so go ahead and open your zipper and spread your neckline out. And with right sides facing, go ahead and pin your facing to your neckline. So I like to pin at my shoulders first so I know that I'm aligning those seam lines. And then go ahead and open out the zipper and pin. And I'm going to pin in the middle. Okay. And now we're going to stitch down the facing at the zipper and then around the neckline and then down the other side of the zipper. Okay, so first I'm going to stitch pretty close to our zipper. You can feel it, okay, so you know that you're not stitching through your zipper teeth. And back stitch. And then pivot and then adjust so that you're five eighths of an inch away. Back stitch. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and trim. I'm going to trim my corner. And then I'm going to trim some of my neckline. So I'm going to trim it down to about a quarter inch. Okay, now you want your facing to stay to the inside, so I would suggest that you go ahead and understitch. Make sure that your seam allowances are facing your facing. And then sewing only on your facing side, catching that seam allowance, you're going to stitch close to the edge. Now you can go ahead and turn your facing to the right side and pull out your corners. Okay, give your facing a good press and all you have left to do is the hem of your sleeve. And of course, try your dress on, make sure it's as long or as short as you want and then finish the hem of your dress and you're all done. Thanks for watching, make sure and subscribe and visit the blog at mimijistyle.com. Until next time, peace.